All right, today I'm going to be showing you how I built a milk machine for less than $200. Let's go. Okay, <clears throat> so as I said, I'm gonna be walking you through how I built my milking system today. And I scoured the market top to bottom, left to right, looking at all the different options that were out there and none of them fit my specific needs. So I said, JD, you can do this, you can make one. And I did. If you want a detailed explanation of how my milking system worked, there's gonna be a video up here about that. But kind of a brief synopsis of it is I have a vacuum pump into a manifold. In that manifold, I have a regulator or something that I use as a regulator, a gauge to know what my pressure is. And then I have a T that splits off to my two milking stands. And in my system, I have two different types of animals that I'm milking. I'm milking my cow and I'm milking my sheep. So I have a cow milking stand and then I have a sheep milking stand. And I don't wanna to have to drag my milking machine from one to the other. I just wanna flip a button and be able to put my animals in the stands and milk them and not have to worry about dragging my equipment around. So that's kind of why, or my needs for my system that I wanted. I wanted to milk and I wanted it to be easy and cheap. So without any further ado, let's dig into how I built this milking system and stick around to the end and I'll go through the actual cost associated with it. Okay, so here are the supplies we're gonna be using to make our vacuum, our milking system. We have our vacuum pump. On the vacuum pump, it has flare fitting and an Acme fitting, half inch. From that, we're gonna come, if we can get the flare fit, if we can get the Acme fitting to mate with the NPT fitting, we're gonna forego the flare portion of it, but just in case, we have a flare nut to go onto this flare fitting. It's gonna run through quarter inch copper tubing into another flare fitting, quarter inch flare to quarter inch MIP. From there, that's gonna go into a manifold. So we're gonna have a, a one T fitting. Off of that T fitting, we're gonna have a nut or a plug, which we're gonna use as our vacuum regulator. We then have a nipple into another T fitting, which we're gonna put our vacuum gauge up to. <clears throat> another nipple into our last T, which then this last T <clears throat> is gonna go into our vacuum lines, which in this case we're using pressure lines, or uh, compressed air lines. From there, we're gonna go into a ball valve. And my system is gonna be split into two because I have both sheep and a cow that I'm gonna be milking. We're then gonna have a ball valve, <clears throat> which is gonna control the vacuum to the actual milking stand that we want. A T for our barb, or a MIP to a barb to go to our vacuum tube to the actual milk stand itself. Let's get to it. Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do first is I'm gonna see if I can't get a NPT to mesh with a Acme using enough Teflon tape to where it will actually hold a vacuum. I personally am skeptical of it, but it is worth a shot. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna test it out. We're gonna turn the pump on. We're gonna see if we can't get it to maintain an appropriate vacuum. Okay, so now we're gonna turn the pump on. And it is holding suction. So for the time being, we are going to forego the flare fittings. And we're going to go straight from the Acme into the NPT. So now that I have this first T on, this first T is going to be my regulation valve. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to induce a leak into the system with a plug and then adjusting this plug is going to induce how much of an actual leak I have in the system which should then control my vacuum pressure upstream. 
since I want a leak between the plug and the T fitting, I'm not going to use Teflon tape on this. If I want to decrease the pressure upstream of here, I'm just going to back off this nut, create a bigger leak, which should reduce the pressure upstream because it's sucking in more ambient air. From this T, we're going to put a nipple on just so we can go from one T to the next T. Okay, on the next side of the nipple, we're going to just put another T. Okay, and then from here, <clears throat> we're going to be putting our gauge. It helps if I have the gauge ready to go and don't have to go looking or hunting around for it. Okay, now we're going to test out so far and see if we can't get this gauge to read and make sure I didn't screw anything up. Alright, working good so far. We're going to try, see if we can't get that pressure, adjust the pressure with this nut. We're going to turn it back on. Got to change some. We'll see how well it does. We can't get it to work a little better so the nut doesn't fall out. We'll play with that later. Okay, and then from here, we're going to go to our next T. So, one more nipple, one more T, so that way I can go to my airlines. And then from here, we're going to attach our air lines. The second one, since I think I know my lefts and my rights, we'll try to figure this other one out. Hopefully it'll go smooth. As long as it works, I'm happy. We're milking a cow, not going to the moon. Now, let's test it again. I'm a fan of testing frequently, just to make sure we didn't make a mistake. do a ball valve because in my system my system is going to be bifurcated it's going to split one's going to go to my milk the milk stand for my cow the other one is going to go to the milk stand for my sheep one pump two systems I want to be able to turn each system on and off independently hence the ball valve And then from that ball valve, we're going to go to a MIP to a quarter inch barb fitting. And then we're going to repeat the same process for the other side. And then from here, we go to our quarter inch tubing to our actual teacup. So there we have it. There's a vacuum system. A few things to note. One, up here on the manifold, if you wanted to add a pulsator, this is where I personally would add the pulsator. <clears throat> right after the pressure gauge 
so I know the pressure, my vacuum pressure inside my pulsator. And then the tube coming off the pulsator would go straight to the teat cup. The other is if you wanted to add a vacuum chamber, at somewhere in here, between here and here, you could add that vacuum chamber. If you want to learn more about what a pulsator does and what a vacuum chamber is for, click the links either below or somewhere up in the top corner if I'm able to get it up there. Okay, so one last thing that I did. Since I'm using an oil pump, oil vapor comes out of the exhaust port right here. I took a piece of tubing, connected it to the exhaust port, ran it into a mason jar where I drilled and punched a hole at the top, two of them. That way the exhaust will come down into the mason jar. The vapor should settle out, ran another exhaust port or a tubing from here, which I'm then going to vent outside of my building because this pump is going to stay inside a climate controlled building. I'm going to run all the lines out into my barn in an effort to help preserve the pump. This is going to prevent oil residue from getting all over the stuff inside of my barn or inside of my building. Right, vacuum's coming on. Pressure's going up. Vacuum's off. The pressure's slowly building. So there are leaks in the system. However, that's fine. I'm not trying to make a vacuum chamber. I'm trying to make a milk machine. Now let's see if we can't get it to hold the pressure we want. So that's sitting right around 12. Okay, so here we go. We have the final setup and it's the place where it's going to be resting. We have the pump, the regulator, the gauge up to the T, splits out and goes out of the building. Exhaust port to capture the oil vapors into the mason jar, back up, out of the building. Okay. Once we run the pipes through, correction, the air lines and the tube through, I ran it up, just kind of get it out of the way so the animals don't inadvertently kick it. The exhaust port comes up, and then back down to try and help keep debris out of it. And then we'll clean this up, make a more permanent solution in the future. The two vacuum lines go off. One comes over to my sheep stand. Where we have the ball valve, it'll go into the tubing to actually milk the sheep. The other one comes off and down to my headlock. It's again, it's hard to see if I can't get the lighting right, but the ball valve to the tube into the actual teacup. You might be wondering to yourself, why did I get such long compressed air tubing for the run that I needed? It was simple. The 50 foot version of this was on sale for cheaper than the 25 foot version. Went with the cheaper. Okay. So that is how I built my milk machine. Now let's go and take a look at the finances. Okay. So here are the finances. My machine cost me $250.96. I needed a vacuum pump, $65. One, two, three T fittings at $1055. A plug at $397. A nipple, a pressure gauge, another nipple, two air hoses, two barb fittings, two tubings, a teat cup, two teat liners, and one set of bottles. Now you're thinking to yourself, JD, you lied. You said you built this for less than $200. And you can easily make it for less than $200. And mine initially was less, but I decided to be lazy and spend a little bit extra money because I didn't want to have to worry about lugging hoses from one milking station to another. 
So, if you don't have two milking stations, you can get rid of a lot of these things. You don't need a second air hose. You don't need a T fitting to split the air hoses off. You only need one barb fitting. You only need one piece of tubing. And if you have one animal that you're milking, you only need one teat cup. So when you simplify the milking system that I built to milking one animal at one milking station, it's only going to cost you $189.67 as of 2024. Inflation, prices go up. I can't really guarantee that in two to three years it's going to still cost you this much. But as of right now when I'm making this video, you can make this milking system for $189.67. There you have it. That is how I built a milk machine and you can build a milk machine for less than $200. I hope you like, subscribe, and stick around for more content like this.